Here we're asked to solve for the variable in each of the following equations and then check our answers. These problems are going to involve a couple of steps and in general our process is going to be to apply the addition subtraction property of equality followed by the multiplication division property and then to check our result. This won't always work exactly like this but this process will get us through a lot of these problems that are a little bit more complicated and involve more than one step. So let's see how these steps will help us starting with part A. I have 2B minus 4 equals 12. My goal is to write B by itself because that will give me the quantity that is a solution to this equation. So if I apply the first step, the addition subtraction property of equality, the first thing I want to do is to move the negative 4 over to the right hand side. And the way I do that is I have 2b minus 4, I'm going to add 4 to both sides. So that gives me a new equivalent equation that is 2b, because this part goes away, equals 16. Now 2 times what number equals 16? This is probably going to be 8, but how do I get there? I'm going to divide both sides by 2 because I don't want to know what 2b is, I want to know what b is. So that gives me b equals 8. Now let's double check. I'm going to take 2 parentheses 8 because that's the value we found for b, subtract 4 and the result should be 12. If it is, then I have checked and I have the correct solution for b. Part B, 4 plus 3R equals 5. I'm working to get R by itself. What's attached to R is 4 through addition and 3 through multiplication. So I'm going to begin by moving the 4 through subtraction. So I'm subtracting 4 from both sides. So this part goes away. I'm left with 3R equals 1. Now I'm going to divide both sides by 3 using the division property of equality, leaving me with a final solution of r equals 1 third. Let's check. I'm going to take 4 plus 3 parentheses 1 third, so that's 3 times 1 third, and that result should give me 5. It does which means r equals one-third checks and is the solution to our original equation. Part C, 3.2 equals 19.1 minus 2m. My m is all the way over here on the right-hand side. This is the part I want by itself. What's attached to m is 19.1 attached to addition minus 2 attached to multiplication. So I'm going to start this process by subtracting 19.1 from both sides. So I have 19.1 minus 19.1 minus 2m. So that part goes away. I'm going to use my calculator 3.2 minus 19.1 that gives me negative 15.9 equals negative 2m. I want m by itself, so I'm going to divide both sides by negative 2. That means on the right, negative 2 divided by negative 2 becomes 1. So I have negative 15.9 divided by and I'm going to put this negative 2 in parentheses. That gives me a positive 7.95 value for m. Let's plug that into the right hand side here and see if we get 3.2. So I have 19.1 minus 2 parentheses 7.95 enter gives me 3.2 meaning m equals 7.95 checks as the solution to our original equation 
And when I worked this division here, I didn't put the 15.9 that was negative. I didn't put that in parentheses. But that would have been a good idea as well. Anytime you are working with negatives and division, it's good to go ahead and put the part that's negative in parentheses. All right, part D, I have 11 minus y equals 32. I want y by itself. I'm going to begin by subtracting 11 from both sides. So I have 32 minus 11. That part goes to 0. So I have negative y equals 22. So here, if negative y is 22, then y is negative 22. I'm just multiplying both sides by negative 1. So let's double check. I'm going to plug negative 22 for y. So that's 11 minus, again, parentheses, negative 22. So look at that very carefully and see how I put that into the calculator. This is the negative that was part of the original equation. This is the negative that is attached to the 22. And when I press enter, that should give me 32. It gave me 33. So let's see what happened here. Ah, there's a mistake right here. So that's exactly why we check. So I want you to think that I did that on purpose. And maybe I did. So let's see what happened here. When I subtracted 32 minus 11, I should have gotten 21 instead of 22. So let's go back to this part. Negative y equals should have been 21. So this part is not correct, which I found out by my check. Negative y is 21, meaning y is negative 21. We're going to take that value, plug it back in. 11 minus parentheses, negative 21, enter, gives me my correct result of 32. So that means that y equals negative 21 is the correct solution. And you see why that checking is so important, because you can get going through these problems very quickly make a mistake and not realize it. And if you're not checking, then you won't catch it. So let's look at part E. I have 3 plus 3 fifths x equals 12. I want x by itself. It's joined with a 3 through addition and 3 fifths through multiplication. So I'm going to begin the process by subtracting 3 from both sides. So that gives me 12 minus 3. So that part goes to 0. So I have 3 fifths x equals 9. Now I want to multiply both sides by the reciprocal of 3 fifths, which is 5 thirds. And by doing so, that leaves 1 in front of the x. That's why we picked the reciprocal. And on the right-hand side, this is really 9 over 1. So 3 goes into itself one time, into 9 three times. That leaves a final result of 15. So let's check. Let's plug 15 in here. 3 plus, and then I'm going to put 3 fifths in parentheses, and then times 15. And does that give me 12? Yes, it does, and so this checks, meaning x equals 15, is our final solution. Part f, I have 5 minus 2x equals 4. So I'm going to start this process. I want x by itself. Currently attached to x are 5 through addition and minus 2 through multiplication. So I'm going to begin the process by subtracting 5 from both sides. So this part goes to 0. I have negative 2x equals, and that's kind of hard to read because of how I have it written, negative 1, 4 minus 5, negative 1. Negative 2 times x, I'm going to divide both sides by negative 2. This part goes to 1. 
So I have x equals negative 1 divided by negative 2 becomes positive 1 half. Now I'm going to check. I'm going to plug in 1 half for x. 5 minus 2 parentheses 1 half. And that result should equal 4. And it does. So this checks, meaning that x equals 1 half is our final solution.